little slow. I will call the um, Tuesday, September 10th, 2024 meeting to order. And I will ask Diane to call the roll. Trustee Brendan? Here. Trustee Hess? Here. Trustee Hummel? Trustee? Um, I don't know if that's one of him. Oh, okay, that was Dwayne. Never mind. Go ahead. Trustee <laughs> Ratke? Here. Trustee Saylor? Uh, he is coaching football. And Trustee Zerflu? Is here. Trustee Zerflu? Here. Okay, there he is. Okay. Before we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like to remember those who lost their lives on September 11th, uh, 2001. On this day, 23 years ago, many went to sleep not knowing that their lives would end or change forever the next day. There was 2,977 individuals that died before 10 a.m. These individuals were traveling on planes or simply going to work, either in their office buildings or to their stations. To this day that there are thousands impacted by this terrorist attack, either by missing a loved one or by living with conditions caused by the attacks. To this date, nearly 4,343 individuals that helped in the recovery and cleanup phase of that area have died due to the toxic chemicals that they were exposed to, which caused respiratory disease and other cancers. Our moment of silence will not only be for those lives that were lost on that day, but the, for the survivors and for all of their families that are living um, with their absence. So please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. So we are on to number four, motion to approve the consent agenda. The meeting minutes of August 13th, 2024 board meeting for monthly bills and previous month entries. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion by Radke, second by Hess. Any discussion or any removal of any of those things? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Joe. Oh. Was that an aye from you? Trusty aye. Joe? Okay. <laughs> okay. And that motion carries. So we are on to public comments. Sandy has a question mark. Carrie Smith. <laughs> you can. Carrie uh, Smith, I just got a uh, comment on uh, app two, I guess it is. The first responder thing only. I'm not against having a separate line. I'm dividing first responders right off. I have your own budget line, pull 25000 off the fire department one, get the first responders third thing, and then you know exactly where you're paying for first responder emergency and ambulance together, which will probably come up about 7000 for the village. I mean, asking them to do an entry level course, which is state statutes, is only 36 hours. I believe yeah. uh, so to have them do to be a fire to understand what the firefighters are going into isn't a big question because this is a fire department, not a first responder. But I mean, if we divided it, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, that's you know, Wisconsin Rapids, your ambulance and fire that's full time, obviously, but they don't let you choose. And uh, in Nakusa, it was when they had the ambulance service, it was one or the other, it was on the ambulance or the fire. Uh, and then the other comment I got is you want to change to Wednesdays when I coach. Uh, Wednesday night was religion. I mean, you're asking uh, people to, you know, either come to a meeting or religious beliefs. I don't think that's right. Uh, and I don't agree with having your meetings during the day when most of your public is working. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. Um. Sandy, have you changed well, your mind? Okay. Well, there we go. Only, yeah, calm down, ladies. Don't, don't take the tranquilizer later. Um, the only reason is because you um, referred to 9-11. I would just like to oh, count the minutes because everybody goes over anyway. I'd like to just um, tell you I have a friend who was working at the Pentagon on 9-11. 
the day before in the cafeteria. She slipped on some water that the ice machine was leaking. And the next day she was headed to work on 9-11. And her guy said, where do you think you're going? Well, I'm going to work, you know. Her apartment was near the Pentagon. He says, no, you're going to put your foot up and you're going to ice it. And she had been right where the planes came in. Hmm. She was supposed to be in a meeting that day. And she tells me that there would have been mega thousands more murdered that day. Had that not had not that part of the Pentagon been up for renovation. So they weren't full like they would have been if it wouldn't have been under construction. So yeah, it's she's still after all these years, you know, the thought of what it could have, I should have been the people she knew and everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. We were at actually Culver's tonight because between four o'clock and eight o'clock, our um, veterans get 5% of all proceeds and it goes right to the VFW post in Wisconsin Rapids. So of course we were there to, to um, promote and support our, our veterans. But yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a horrible day for everybody. Thank you for that story, Sandy. Hopefully your friend will go through that. Okay, nobody else has got anything to say? Okay. Then I get the right paper here. Um, I am on to president's report. Sorry, too many papers. Um, we had a resignation from the police and fire commission from Mr. Corey Schaefer. He, that is due to him moving um, out of state and away from us. So we thank Corey for serving um, our village in the capacity that he did while he was here. Um, we wish him and his family well uh, on their next adventure that they get to go on. But with that, um, let me see here. With that, I will be appointing Mr. Bruce Diggles to the Police and Fire Commission. Bruce is a longtime village resident. He currently is serving on the Wood County Sheriff's Rescue Squad and I just want to say thank you to Bruce for wanting to step up and um, serve a village in this capacity. Um, so please give Commissioner Diggles a warm welcome. I want to make sure that Scott Stewart has got all of your information. You guys can connect when he gets back into town and get you going. Sound good? Yeah. All right, thank you. And B, um, I did previously send this out to board members that we need to do a revote on the nomination for Mr. Hummel because inadvertently um, Jen Moore um, voted for in favor for him, but she could have should have recused herself because she can't vote for her own replacement, um, essentially. So with that, we just have to do the revote all over again, like we did before. So I'm going to nominate Mr. Hummel um to replace that vacant seat of trustee Moore. there is a motion and a second any discussion okay all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 trustee zerflu aye okay thank you that one passes i've also received trustee grunin's official resignation this will take effect at the conclusion of tonight's meeting I want to thank her for her years of service to the village as trustee. With that, I've talked to a couple of different people about their interest in serving the village and her vacant seat effective after this meeting. So I'm going to nominate Mr. Nick Fluger to replace, not replace, take her spot until the end of her term. Um, he has worked with Wood County as safety safety and risk specialist for the past five years and was the emergency management coordinator for the whole trunk nation for 16 years before he brings a wealth of knowledge with his background as well as his knowledge for robert's rules which is also helpful so i nominate mr fluger to the upcoming vacant seat of trustee grunden okay thank you i was about to say like hold on a minute before we have to do this over <laughs> so is there a motion in a second Okay, sorry. Motion by Mr. Hess. Is there a second? 
I think I can second it, mm -hmm. can't I? Even though I nominated, I'll second that one. Any discussion on that? Madam President. Oh, go ahead. I will be uh, voting present because this may be a conflict of interest for me. Um, not only is he a county employee, I'm a county supervisor, and also he resides in my district. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I guess, sorry. <laughs> um, I just found out that uh, Trustee Grundon is resigning. And it's been a pleasure working with you and it's kind of sad news I just found out here prior to the meeting and um, I know she's worked hard and for our community and the people of our community and I know that her heart really was in it and I understand uh, some of the reasons why she is um, leaving us and um, upon that though I, I think that we should leave that seat open until the election uh, one of my reasons is uh, you know we're appointing a lot of different people and I think that we should just leave that open until um, the election. Mr. Hummel, he did run for the board and he went and got nominations of signatures from the people in the village. And I think um, the trustees that are here and that we've done that numerous times going door to door know how that is. Uh, it's not something that is is lightly, some people will say no, some people will ask you what a party you're affiliated with. Mm -hmm. And it's it's part of the process of being a board member. And um, so I think at this point in time, my feeling is that we leave that open until the uh, April election. And that is just my feeling on it. Okay, thank you. Anything else from anybody? Oh, I can't ask you. Okay, so. With that, so I have a procedural question, Mr. Zerflu. With you recusing yourself, we only have three people able to vote on the issue. Does that, because that wouldn't make a quorum vote, correct? You you need four. You could check check with uh, Dwayne on that. Okay, Dwayne, procedural wise. Yes, yeah, seeing that you have um, a majority of the board there, you would definitely need four. On, a, on, a, on the affirmative for that confirmation. Okay. So with uh, Trustee Zerflu recusing himself, we only have three voters, so then we should table this? Or, okay. Either you, either you uh, follow the motion and then fail, or you have the people who have made the recommendation re reverse their proposal and, and take it off the table. Okay. Well, um, then just because we don't have the votes, I'm going to table this. So reverse the motion, just table it until we have enough people at the table um, to be able to have a vote. Um, I guess not realizing that Mr. Zerflu would have to recuse himself from that um, vote kind of makes that change a little bit. Madam President, I apologize. I should have brought that up to you. Uh, well, we talked today about some of the other matters, so I do apologize. That's okay. That happens. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is, is is stating present the same as otherwise in regards to the quorum? Well, because it wouldn't be a an I or nay vote. Correct, Duane. Actually, uh, check with uh, Joe, but I think when you state yourself present, that's considered a po affirmative vote. Oh. That, that may be the case. Uh, I will uh, change it to abstention. Okay. Okay, then why don't we just table this to the next meeting just so that we can have, have enough people uh, to vote on it if officially. Nikki, I can go another month. Um, until you have that bill decided. Okay, that's completely up to you. Okay, thank you. Um, so with that, I was gonna a motion to approve the new committees. Um, I did hand them out, but where did I put oh, right next to me? Um, those of you around the table, um, have seen it, but I'm just wondering, 
do we have to table that as well then? The new committee structure? Joe or Duane, sorry, I should. <laughs> I would think we could proceed. If Joe will. Oh yeah, Joe can vote on that, can't you? If if you're asking by opinion, I am voting for the committee, not an individual. Okay. Duane, you agree? Uh, there is a full board there, and whatever the committee recommendation is from the village president, the full board can, and because um, uh, it's not on our resignation, Tierra is voting also in a, as a trustee. So you got all you there, and you have four, uh, five, so you would you have a full a full count to vote. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure we don't have to redo this again. It does. We would just have to strike out um, where I have. Um, that other name. So for, and if Tier decides not to go for the next month, then I can just fill those spots, correct, Joe? Sit in on those vacant? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. We didn't make a motion to make more conversation. Sorry. <laughs> so is there a motion? Can, I move that we approve the new committees with discussion. Yes. Yep. Then I just need a second so we can discuss it. Second. Okay. Motion by Hess and second by Grundin. So discussion. Rick, do you have anything? Clarify what spots are here. Yes. Because so yes, there will be um I will I will go through um each one okay. then. So for each FHR and IT, uh, the chair remains the same with uh, Trustee Radke and then with Trustee Zerflu. Do we, Joe, do you want us to do each com each committee voted or one at the end? Oh, that, that's fine. Duane, explain that I can, you know, as a whole, you know, I'm voting for committee structure, not for an individual. Got it. Okay. So for, again, for FHR and IT, Chair Radke, um, Zerflu, and then the open spot, which I'll either tier or I will fill in on. For PLP, Chair remains Hess with Sailor and Hummel. Public Safety, Chair remains Zerflu with Hess, that open spot, or myself. Public Works, Chair Sailor with Radke and Hess. Parks, Recreation, and Cemetery Chair changed to Hummel. I did talk to him today about that, and he did accept, accept that nomination to be chair with Sailor and Zerflu. Further discussion or questions? Um, with the chair of Parks is your appointment, Madam President. Oh. It's not a nomination. Okay. Appointment for, for Mr. Hummel, but I did talk to him about that earlier just to make sure he was okay with that thank you for the clarification oh yes i guess i just uh i think we should really i think we're putting it putting it up too fast until we have a we decided we're going to leave trustee grundon's spot open or if we're going to appoint somebody to that i think that we just leave the committees as is until we decide and we have a full board here that would be present. That's okay. where, just an opinion on my part. Thank you. I want to put my name in for Kluger until, if that would make it easier until uh, you're able to proceed with making the change so the committees can continue to okay. function fully staffed. Okay. Rick, do you have an opinion? Or, uh, sorry. No, I don't. Discussion. I guess if, if we leave to our <clears throat> Madam Chair. Yes, Dwayne. Um, Trustee uh, Grundon, did she effectively give a date for her resignation in your letter? Oh, I said it was going to be tonight. Yep. But I will stop mm. on that. Okay, so you're you're withdrawing your resignation. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. 
so we would either need to go forward with this change or you guys we need to your uh, trustee Grundin in the open spot. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your settle your question? No, I still think that we should have the the whole board here, and if we're gonna when Tierra resigns and we if we decide to leave her spot open or if we're going to fill her spot, then I think we change the committees at that point in time. Missing trustees uh, Saylor and yeah. trustee Hummel. Yes. Yes. We do. We do. Yep, where we can vote on it. Yep. Yes. Trustee Zerfley, do you have anything? Uh, outside of I can't copy Trustee Hess, um, I can hear everybody else, and that's hearing aids included, and I can't pick him up. I apologize, Trustee Zerfley. <laughs> I will speak up. Pre pretend that you're mad at me like the old days when I stole an officer. <laughs> Okay. I never got mad at you. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I would like to move forward with this. And then if we need to next month, then we can change it again. I'll just have to come with A, B, and C next month if that happens with different options. Um, so there was a motion. <laughs> there was a motion and a second. If, is there any more discussion on the matter to accept the as as read because trustees or flu can't see it um, committee members no more discussion okay but are we clear on what we're voting on okay <laughs> it's been a very confusing night already <laughs> okay all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. trustees or flu aye okay um, nays nay okay that carries then thank you for that i will send that out once we talk with trustee grundon once i trust talk with trustee grundon some more on the plans okay commission and committee reports for the airport commission the notes are in there um if you have any questions all right i guess trustee zerfler do you have anything to add Besides no, nothing at all. We're, we're still looking at gate repair and uh, due to too much fishing, I forgot the other second thing I want to mention, but it should be in the notes. Anybody can get a hold of me and give me a call if they have a question. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, Police and Fire Commission, we have the one meeting minutes in there. Commissioner Stewart did send me the notes from last night's meeting, so I will go through that with you. PFC. We could put Mr. Dickles on the spot and make him present the minutes. Yeah. Do you want to do that? No. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. The PFC met last night at five o'clock. We acknowledged Commissioner Corey Schaefer's resignation and recognized him for all of his hard work and dedication to the PFC this past year and a half. We wish him well with his new endeavors. Per Wisconsin statute requirement, the PFC conducted an annual officer election with the following results. Scott Stewart as the president, Gary Bloom as the vice president, Leo Thomas Gard as the secretary. The commissioners discussed and approved the police chief position advertisement for hire set to begin October 1st. The recruitment will include ads on the village website, Willinet and the Wisconsin Police Chiefs Association. We asked Chief Drew to actively recruit a police officer applicant to fill an open part-time position due to the resignation of Officer Zerflu. In closed session, the PFC reviewed a fire department applicant, interview results, and background investigation. The applicant will be placed on an eligibility to hire list pending a successful medical examination. The next PFC meeting is scheduled for 10-14 at 5 o'clock. If you have any further questions besides that, please see Scott Stewart. <laughs> I can't answer any. Um, plan commission. There was no meeting. So public works, Mr. Radke, will you please take that? Yes, uh, since uh, uh, Mr. Trusted Sailor is the chair on that, but he's not here. So we met on August 28th at 10 in the morning. And um, 
we discussed uh, some of the uh, upcoming projects uh, we're wrapping up. Um, everything is going well. Uh, I think you can see some of the stumps have been taken care of here in the village. They're filling in. They're getting ready for some uh, leaf pickup. Uh, summer help is all done for the summer. Everything went well. We only had two, but it worked out well. And we stayed in the budget. We were able to give them a little bit more money and increase. We had talked about that earlier in the season uh, to retain them. Um, the uh, TIF projects uh, have been bidded out and actually they were actually uh, in here too. Mm -hmm. You can see from the, the uh, they'll probably be brought up at the next public works meeting. Um, there is one motion that we would like to uh, have. It's a motion to approve a resolution number 2024-06, uh, resolution authorizing village staff to submit um, and coordinate an executive uh, urban forest grant. Uh, this is, uh, again, we've applied for this grant in the past. I think that we've actually gotten some money from this grant. We've been applying for a lot of grants to help out. Um, unfortunately, the last one we did not get, that was a match grant. Um, but we'd like to apply for this again with all the trees with the Ashbourne disease that we had discussed about earlier in the year. We did take it down a lot. We saved some money by having the village crew take down quite a few, but some are in high line areas and them uh, we have to do to get professionals come in. So we're not uh, putting our staff at risk of dropping a limb on a high line or whatnot. So um, I am, uh, I will present that motion and make that motion uh, to apply for that grant. Okay. Second. Motion by Radke, second by Hess. Discussion. Do we know how much this grant will be for? Uh, Mr. Martinson, I'd like to bring that to you. Your... It's 25000 dollars right now. So we have 25000 for next year. This is we put in the budget for tree and brush removal, and then this is the match for applying for another 25000 And that's a budgeted number yeah. that we always budget for. Thank you. Can you hear me, Trustee Durflu? Negative. <laughs> we're we're asking for a resolution to uh, apply for a grant for urban forestry. There's twenty five thousand dollars that we usually set in the budget for tree and parks, and uh, we it's a match grant. So if we get the grant, we would use the existing twenty five thousand from next year's budget, and that would be doubling our budget for that um, service. Money well spent. Okay, um, Ben. Yep. Um. Can we, does Mid-State, does their class take trees down? They don't do that anymore. They have in the past, but the enrollment is down and they do a few of their own inside Mid-State and other areas, so. And the other thing I was thinking about that maybe we could explore, like if a resident that had a tree taken down in front of their house, if they want to buy the tree to be put in that area with the village put it in, and maybe people would be Willing to invest, and that would help get that process going. Yeah, but definitely right now, people do call me and ask, and we put a tree in there, and then um, myself and the village forester go out there and just make sure that the tree they're going to plant is proper for that area. Well, and with that, maybe putting out a list of the most appropriate trees, disease resistant, given that it would be on village property and village maintained. Maybe if something like that was created, it would get people to maybe want to be invested and. Helping beautify that way if they knew, if they knew that that was a possibility. A great idea. Well, after 2025, we'll definitely look into that and get something out there this winter. Great idea. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Yeah, I'll come up with some good ones on my way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion in a second to. Approved resolution number 2024 06, a resolution authorizing village staff to submit, coordinate, and execute urban forestry grant and urban forestry catastrophic storm grant programs. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Trustee Zerflu. Aye. Okay. That one passes. Other than that, um, I will let the chairman of that committee set the next meeting um, okay. because uh, that is the chairman's job. So please not hear it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Any questions for public works? 
Okay, moving on to Parks and Recreation Committee. We didn't have a meeting this month. No. Um, in conversations with Ben, it was determined not necessarily necessary. Got it. Thank you. Public Safety Committee. Um, Trustee Hess, would you like to take that one? Uh, we met on August 28th at 12 o'clock noon. Uh, Chief Police went over the month's activities. Um, Fire Department hosted an LZ training for all of Southwood County first responder uh, departments of LifeLink, uh, LifeLink members of the class of the station. Uh, I believe it was well attended. Yes, very well. Um, Chief Police and Lieutenant Mansell attended a meeting with Police Department and School to Start Protective Services Club. It's going to be held the second and fourth Wednesdays at school during the Blackhawk period. Post testing was completed. Um, and Chief Police and uh, Supervisor Martinson will be working on a key fob system for the fire station. And also, Chief Police attended a meeting with the DSPS for the new fire chief orientation. Um, we had a discussion of possible motion to create a first responder only position within the fire department. So that motion is being brought forward out of the committee. Can I stop here? Uh, you can make the motion if you want to. I will make a motion to create a first responder only position. Second. Uh, second by Zerflu. Motion made by Hess, second by Zerflu. Discussion. I guess I would just like to, to ask a um, is that possible? I guess what um, we had a citizen comment here about, and I'm for the first responder uh, portion, but would that be a separate line budget or is it like one budget item for, I know we have uh, fire department wages, but would that be separate in the line budget? Maybe I can ask Diane that. Is that a separate line? No, it all goes under wages. All under wages. Is that something maybe we could look at? It's breaking down just first responders versus fire. I'm sure, I guess, to go off table, if no objections. Go ahead. Um, fire chief, is that something? I mean, I'm sure that we get more fire calls than we do, I mean, for more first responder calls than fire calls. Yes, typically about double. Okay. And what I proposed was right now I can have up to 12 first responders on my roster. I already have seven right now. So basically, I would just be adding from seven to 12. I don't want to go above and beyond that. I think 12 is a good number for our village. Um, as far as the, what they get paid, I already pay first responders, and we already have a first responder group. So that's why I'm asking for just this position for some people that maybe don't want to be fired, but they would love to do the EMS thing. That's what I am hoping, hoping and envisioning for the department to move forward that way. A lot of other departments around the area do that. And they may decide that they want to join the fire and then they would just have to go to more training. Correct. Okay. Or say like, say a husband and a wife want to come to a fire station or don't be volunteers. Maybe one doesn't want to do fire and the other does and vice versa for EMS. And hopefully that would keep them around long too and keep our numbers up for a longer period of time. Makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions for Chief Lease while he's up? Yeah. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So then would we be facing like is there a structure around it, the way that it will happen, or is it going to be like we get a call and there's four first responders partly showing up after the ambulance? My, what I would like to do is create a schedule for my first responders so that they know that they're on call. And I would like them to be closer, I guess, would be the best way to put it. I'm not going to turn anybody down because I think it's valuable. But the same token, I also want to be smart with my budget and how much I have for salary to stay with it. With that would be the part of first responders showing up in order to pat the back of the um, ambulance. Are you are you tuned into that part? Like, yes. And then just one other thing. I'm sorry. Um, There, there's the obvious fact that we have calls during the day that we don't have people coming to, and the majority of the calls in the village are first responders. Is that right? 
Or double. Or if you double EMS to fire. That would be. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for Chief Lease? It's not right now, Carrie. Nope. Nope. Not right now. Okay. Thank you. So uh, he did hand out a um, job description, and it pretty much just says it's different, and it just says that they don't have to necessarily be fire first. Rick, any other, any other discussion on this? Any mother? Okay. Trustee Zerflu, sorry, I keep forgetting to ask you. Do you have any other questions on this program? No. Nope. Or position, pro I should pro say? Program that's long overdue. I agree 100% with Chief Elise. Thank you. I do have another question. Oh, okay. For Chief. Um, in one of the emails we recently received, there was something about host testing. Was that host testing? Did you decide to contract that out? Hold on, let's that finish was... this time. Let's finish this first, then oh, we can I'm go sorry. back to that. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so, motion to create a first responder only position. Made by Hess, second by Zerflu. We had the discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Zerflu. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> that one carries. Okay, now continue. Okay. You want to go back? Yes. I'll go with the next motion, I okay. think, first. No, can come oh, yeah. Okay, then we can go um, back to the discussion. <laughs> continuing the, from the minutes of the Public Safety Committee meeting, there was another discussion of possible motion to create a cadet program within the fire department. The motion is being brought forward to the board meeting to create a cadet program within the fire department. Um, Chief Lease explained the program in the Public Safety Committee. Um, it would be open to all students, not just Port Edwards. This is the same. This is not the same as the Protective Services Committee that is being done at the Port Edwards School. This would be done like other cadet programs in the area. Uh, that motion was carried at committee. Uh, that motion I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion by Grundin. Do you have a second? Second. Second by Radke. Any further discussion, questions, comments on this cadet program? We'll just say we talked about it, we proposed it. I think it's exciting to see it happen. And hopefully this will get our young people maybe to be reinvested back into the community when they have that tie. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a, just a comment. I think yep. it's a great idea. I mean, we had a law enforcement club in school. There's a lot of kids that come out of that school and that became in law enforcement or law enforcement related jobs and, and fire actually, there's some, I, I can think of a few. So I think you get kids interested in that stuff and showing them, I think it's just a great, great thing all around. Okay, motion was made and seconded to create cadet program within the fire department. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, trustee Zerflu. Aye. Okay. You just like me having to single you out every time, don't you? I cannot answer that. <laughs> okay. Anything further with public, public safety? Uh, the police department update. Um, Chief Drew received a resignation letter from a part-time officer who was appointed Grand Rapids Police Chief. Um, they wish them well. The department also assisted in several cases over the month. Um, there were two cases that... Uh, Chief Drew went into that were uh, 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 the represented the part of the National Night Out at the event at River Field, and the department participated in another five hour click hitter ticket. Next meeting is Wednesday, August 25th at 4 30 p.m. Now, your question, Trustee. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So there was a question about the funding of the host testing. Yes. I'm confused by that because I thought that happened with the previous chief. It did get, that was set in stone or set up before I took over as chief. Um, and it just comes out of the budget. Thank you. It's actually, it, honestly, it's actually easier that way by mm -hmm. contracting out. I mean, it's nice if the guys come in and do it, but getting them to come in. For meetings, trainings, and post testing, and all the other things that we require, it gets to be a lot, especially for a volunteer program. So, you find that valuable? I do. 
Okay. Okay. And it also then it gives standards that maybe I'm not completely familiar with, but all of that we have those out of date. Okay. Was there a lot of hoses out of date? Uh, 14 lengths that I got right here. Okay. And one more thing. Sorry. <laughs> um, what was the status on the grant to help with the um, turnout here? Uh, they're still awarding. Um, I've been checking. They award every Friday AFG grant. Um, we have not been awarded, and I reached out to the Alexa pool that helped break the grant, and she agreed with me that more than likely we're not going to get it. Why? We, have we gotten it before? I believe we have. Uh, that I don't know. I'm not sure if we've gotten it before or not. Um, I would assume we have at some point in time, but for me to know for sure, I'd have to go find. Um, yeah, lots of reports and invalid what do you mean reports, reports from nippers from the nippers system from the fire side. Can you refresh? I don't remember what that means. Nippers is National Fire Incident Reporting System. So every time you go out on a call, you got to do a report on both the state and the federal government are calls that you've gone out on a call. And so if they're what do you mean like the reports? Well, if you have invalid reports or you don't do a report for a call, they don't see that you actually went on a call. So there's a couple missing reports, are you saying? Or they're invalid. I went through and fixed all of 2023's invalids. But by then it's too late, the grant's already been submitted and they're already doing the award. All right, so once that's caught up, we'll be better positioned for grants. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, Anything else? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it'll be a pop quiz later. Okay. Anything else for public safety? Okay, do you want to roll right into planning legislative? Uh, planning legislative and uh, property and legislative also met on August 28th. Um, at 5.30, um, the, we had some discussion on the village comprehensive plan. Um, Supervisor Markinson brought forward the um, Wood County price is the same as the North Central Regional Planning um, at $7,500 to complete the comprehensive plan. We had a discussion about that, whether we needed to move forward to that. At this time, coming out of committee, we're going to just leave it and determine in 2025 whether we need to move forward with it based upon what we see with DMI property and the uh, demolition permit. So comprehensive plan, I think it's going to be important if we're going to use it as we move forward to rejuvenate that area. Any comments? May I? That's a, just make sure that you guys speak up because I can see Trustee Zerf le leaning into his computer like he's trying to yeah, hear. Yeah. So. No, no, you're right on. We'll see what uh, come January 1st, where we're at with DMI progress. Okay. Uh, also got an update on the DMI property. Um, they have a meeting plan for next month. Um, Mr. Gao and Supervisor uh, Martinson and Vanderwall will be monitoring their progress on how they're getting ready to complete the things required for the demolition permit. Um, we also had discussion of possible action on an ordinance 2.01 for the regular meeting for a possible date change of the village board meeting. Um, President Mansell presented the idea of moving the regular board meeting from Tuesdays to Wednesday would help accommodate board members who have children, grandchildren at sports or after school activities. Um, the motion was passed at committee level, um, being brought forth to the board. Okay. And I'll make that motion. Okay, motion by Grundin. I'll second that. And then continuing with the discussion. Just I, rank it. I guess it really doesn't matter. I just think that Tuesdays, um, one of the things is I do know there's a lot of religious stuff going on on Wednesdays. And I know maybe there's sports stuff going on Tuesdays. There's always something going on somewhere mm -hmm. or somehow. Um, I guess, you know, if you want to move to Wednesdays, it's really not a big deal. But I do want to take in consideration a, a, com a comment from the public saying, you know, Wednesday is usually a, a, a CCD or a church night. So I do want that to be on record. And I, and I will say, I understand that. Um, I know for me personally, 
with kids in religious studies at church it's we drop them off and then we pick them up so we're not there um where i think we would want to be at sporting events so that's just my thing is that um and my explanation is and i know from teaching ccd we just had the kids we didn't have the parents with us <laughs> so i can see i can see the point well, that's also not but, year round where oh. year round we have like board members that have conflicts I mean, CCD and that stuff, it's, you know, certain times of year that those are taught, even um, Wednesday night youth programs isn't even year round. Right. So by moving that to Wednesday nights, at least we could freely get our board members there without missing events. And then we don't get a lot of public turnout, unfortunately, that would, I think, that make that an option. I mean, a, a hindrance. Yeah, I do know that other areas around us are moving to Wednesday nights because of the sports reason. It was a, this was actually brought to me by um, Supervisor Martinson as an idea. Um, so I didn't just pick it out of the sky and go with it. Religious. Madam <laughs> President. Yes, sir. Um, I'll be voting nay on this issue because being a county board supervisor, the other two townships that I represent part of, besides the village of Port Edwards, meet on Wednesdays. If we move village board to Wednesdays, then that will, I'll have to make a decision what meeting I'm going to be going to. So just for um, clarification, the other areas you represent, not county board meetings, correct? Not your uh, county meetings i represent them on the county board parts of their their townships correct but the county board is not meeting on wednesday nights correct no, i just want to make but, sure i'm understanding you well we do not meet on wednesday nights but that by them switching to wednesday night uh allowed me to go to their meetings on county business as opposed to uh not having in other words, that luxury will no longer be with me if we move ours to Wednesday because as a village supervisor or trustee, I'm going to be flipping a coin to see if I'm going to a village meeting or go to a township meeting for county business. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Okay. There was a motion to change ordinance 2.01 paren one regular meetings, village board meetings to Wednesday instead of Tuesdays. Motion by Grunin, second by Mansell. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, that carries then. Okay, oh, continue work. Trusty Hess, you can continue. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we had another motion. Um, it came out of a closed session to list the property at 140 Market Street. We want to bring that forward to the board meeting. Okay. Are you making the motion? Make okay. Motion to list the property at 140 Market Street, Market okay. Avenue. Market Avenue. Okay. Motion by Hess, second by Grundin. Discussion. We can't say a whole lot because it was in close, the conversation was in closed session. Um, but that was the decision to move forward on that. Anything else? Um, so it would be, be a 60 day um, with the realtor, that piece of property up to 60 days up for sale, and after 60 days of bills, we'll have a meeting, reconvene, and see what they're going to, what we'd like to do moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Trustee Zerflu. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Next meeting, September 25th at 530. September at 530, right? 25th? 25th, 30. Okay. Okay. Finance and Human Resources Committee. Okay, we met um, September 5th at five o'clock here at the Marshall Bueller Center. Um, 
the uh, quotes were presented by Wood County IT and Dirk's group to replace the server. It needed to be replaced. Um, Wood County came in quite a bit less. We did uh, talk with uh, both. And um, my understanding is that they both have a good product, but we've decided to go with the Wood County and it is a budgeted item. So we do have the money for the server. And in the long run, it will save us a lot of uh, well, again, with this here too, some of the other things that we're paying for. So in the long run, it is just needed. Um, any questions on that, Jared? What did we have budgeted for that? Um, it was in the administrative budget, and I believe the cost of it was 10000 from Wood County, and I don't recall what it was. Do you have the numbers? Yep, we had $25,000 in administrative budget. Um, the numbers presented by Wood County here were right on $22,000. Okay. Yep. Um, the numbers presented by Wood County were right on $22,000 within the budget numbers. So. Okay. And what was the um, bid from DIRTS? What was it, DIRTS? Uh, 30 86 So no brainer. Yeah. Um, also, uh, sure, sure, go. So what is the timing on that? If we move forward, we're coming. What is the timing of getting that installed? Ben worked with them, so he'll um, yeah, after doing... the last Thursday night's meeting, we've already started the process. Um, they've already been getting back to us already. The server's ordered. Um, they're going to be coming through the village here in the next day or two, doing a basically find all the computers we have, serial numbers, see which ones need the Microsoft, the Team Three Sixty Five, Windows Three Sixty Five. Eventually, I'll be able to board them with this iPad back and get those reloaded with um, new programs. So, it's in the works. It's still be completed hopefully by December 1st, is what we're hoping for completed. Okay. Thank you. The uh, one, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. The one yeah, thing I do it. like about the going with Wood County and the um, Microsoft 360 is that then we can get rid of Zoom. And that saves us a little bit of money, but then it's also the headache. So with Microsoft Teams, let's say I'm not available. You don't have to wait for my login and all the mumbo jumbo. It's Ben can start it right from his computer or whoever is sitting here. So there's not any specialized passwords and Ooh, access. They have their own computer. Um, they have their own camera. Yeah, correct. Eventually they'll end up installing a camera in the back of the microphone system. That'll be the whole room will be underneath the camera and the sound will have like your microphones within the whole room to pick up the sound with everything. Still be on the uh, TV screen. There'll be a same thing. People get to join in, mm -hmm. obviously, with the is TV. Is that meeting. part included in the bid, or is that something extra? He's working extra right now. He's figuring between fifteen dollars to $2,000 for that extra part. So mm -hmm. with that extra money we have in the budget, we can still accommodate that system. Anything else? Madam President. Yes, sir. Yeah, we use that system for our county committee meetings and our board meetings, and it's just A1 in my estimation. Um, not going to have hardly any problems. Perfect. Good to hear. Okay, go ahead and laugh. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, no worries. Um, also, uh, due to Chief Drew um, giving us his retirement letter. <laughs> Uh, over there, we're sitting in the back. Um, my understanding, the letter is he'll be working till the end of February, and then, but the he'll 14th. still be the 14th, but then he's still on payroll until April using either vacation or time off. So actually, uh, your last day will be in April, right? Correct? April 5th. April 5th. So nice. due to uh, that being presented here at, uh, I believe, the last meeting, um, we've looked at the job description and we'd like to put a motion forward and I'll put this motion forward, a motion to approve the chief of police job description with the amendments in the last two paragraphs striking at the, uh, discretion of the police of chief and a recommended salary between 72 to $83,000 as a salary range. Okay. Motion by Reg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Hess. More discussion. Oh, sorry, you both had your hands up. Go ahead, Trustee Hutt. Hess. Um, is the part of the motion the timing of the hiring too? 
No, uh, that is, uh, hopefully we can get this motion passed. Not, uh, we can go back to the drawing board, but then uh, after this is passed, I would uh, direct uh, Dwayne and Ben to go to the PFC to get a time range of how we want to proceed with uh, the hiring process of getting it posted, where we want it posted or where they want it posted with the PFC. That's their position to fill that spot. We are just sending out recommendations and descriptions. So this is their start. And then uh, once we give them that, they will come back and say, this is our time timetable. And uh, I think you'll see too, that we have, uh, of course, the 25 budget coming up and we have that coming. So we can put numbers together to see where we can fit this time timeline in. There was discussion, I believe, with public safety about the timing and then it was passed on to FHR. Yeah. Safety about the timing of when we'd like to try to get the new police chief on. Correct. Is that settled? Um, we just gave them the... Um, what we'd like to have. What we'd like to have. So according to the PFC <laughs> minutes, it is... Oh my gosh, hold on, let me find it. Because he just wrote it in here. So the... Um, once this gets approved, um, then they'll get, be able to move on it. However, they do have the advertisement for hire set to begin October 1st. Okay. So that does give us enough time that if the, we really need to rewrite this, we can, but I mean, we kind of already done, done that. So what we need tonight is this and the pay. And then their timeline um, that I sent out would just kind of follow suit. If we get any further behind on this, then that just pushes that timeline back. I didn't and agree. I probably put the cart before the horse here, but nope, that's right. we, we talked about the timing. This is the first step in it. I just wanted to see if there was any discussion that came out of that. Right. Okay. I think with the timeline of higher, this is just my thought is it depends on the person that they hire or maybe hire or get closer to, because if you're hiring, if they're going to um, appoint somebody um, that's with, within the department, let's just say somebody applies from within the department, they're going to have a lot shorter training time with Scott, with Chief Drew, <laughs> um, than somebody coming from the outside that has to have a whole new thing. So I think that will be part of their discussion and then probably bring that back to us, I would assume. Anything else? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, for the advertisement and the post that the uh, Public Public Service Commission is doing, PSC, they don't need to know the starting date for the candidate. So that's why it, this is more important to get this out there for them. And then they, like they said, it depends on the candidate and the timing when he actually was starting. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? For the police job description or the salary range? No? Okay. Hearing none, there was a motion to approve the police chief job description with the amendment to the last paragraph striking at the discretion of the chief of police and recommended 72,000 to 83,000 as the salary range. That was by Racky and Hess. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Dang. Trustee Zerflu? Aye. Okay. <laughs> that one cares. <laughs> okay, and then uh, lastly, um, again, we put this on the, for the next agenda. We'll have this on as the proposed budget process coming up. And as you can see, if you, if the members would please take a look at that. You know, we're looking already September 16th, October 1st, starting to get some workshops together, meeting as a committee of the whole, getting the process going, seeing where we're at. Uh, I know we never really know until probably November. Diane knows that. And, you know, the bills keep coming and things, money keeps going in and out but we want to get some idea so we can set forth, uh, you know, some monies for each department to, I think they're doing all a, a great, great job, but uh, to make sure that the wheels keep turning. And with that, the next meeting would be October 3rd. And here, would you still be able to make that five o'clock then? Yeah. Okay. So October 3rd, five o'clock.
Any other questions or anything for me? Anything else for FHR? Okay. Number eight, unfinished business from previous meetings. Anybody have anything? No? Okay. New business. I do have something. Um, this afternoon, I met with Mayor Zacher from Wisconsin Rapids. He asked to just meet um, and discuss just a few, few things, um, more or less just you know, he, he just got in in April. So just, he's trying to go around and meet with other um, municipalities. Um, he is looking for a letter of support by this Friday. I did tell him we had a meeting tonight. So I more or less just need a head nod on this. Um, the letter of support would be going for Wisconsin Rapids is trying to go after a grant. Um, and the grant's purpose would be to have a planning or um, a proposition to move the train tracks that goes all the way from here to Rapids, pushing it back to county, pop the county land back here and running it the back way through Wisconsin Rapids. We do not have any money involved, anything like that, but because we are a, obviously we're on the, on the train tracks, it affects us. Um, he's just looking for if we would be supportive of them going towards the planning grant. We have no skin in the game. We have no money in the game. Just, uh, yeah, go ahead and um, and apply for the grant, essentially. Um, so I want to know everybody's thoughts on that. Again, there's not a whole lot of details in it because they're, that's what the point of the planning is, but they're trying to reroute the railroad to get out of residential areas more into the country and back to and use that that viaduct by the um, the back way um, into the Wisconsin Rapids West Side Industrial Park. So we wouldn't have it going through town. Correct, and it would still service Urkel up here. They're just it would go up that direction instead. So of Urkel <laughs> would not be reliant on VMI. Separate. That's separate. Rail yard issue. Right. That's separate. But if it went behind them, would they They'd have to have a spur to get that yeah. traffic off the main line? But if they changed it this way, would that make that easier for them to accomplish that? It depends on where it goes. Where the main line goes. Right now, right. the main line goes. Right. So right now, I guess the theory is to go out to county land and go up 54 behind. It would still connect to them. It would still make sure it connects mm -hmm. to Urco. Because obviously everybody, I mean, that needs to be a player. Ma Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Um, based on the location and uh, based on uh, DMI situation, that, like you said, that the existing track would be a spur into the DMI property. So there'll still be rail access, just that the main rail will go through there. The main rail will be going north and south. Yeah. Okay. If Trustee they go Zerf through. Right. Trustee Zerfla, do you have anything on that? I wouldn't venture a guess until you mentioned county property, until the county board would meet on something like this. How's that for passing the buck? Yep. Good job. <laughs> Thank you for that. Without objection, if our future board member looks like he had a comment. Oh, I guess without objection, did you know? I reviewed it real briefly. There's two different options. One of them would be substantially rerouting it, like out into the country. The second option would be realistically, it would, because right now it goes across Seneca and kind of makes a turn following the contour of the river. It would essentially go straight from that direction. So. It would still realistically come through Port Edwards um, for both of those options. It would just come through a little bit differently. Um, part of the issue that they're trying to do is they're trying to, again, route it through the country into more, res you know, into more quieter areas there. But they're also trying to address the issue with the expressway and West Grand Avenue. That intersection right there is a big issue with emergency services, mm -hmm. things of that nature. So. Part of the reason is they're trying to move it away from that and kind of come in the backside of Rapids. But one option will substantially reroute it around Port Edwards. The other one will make any difference because all of the work will be done to the north of Seneca. Thank you. And yeah, they're just, that's what the planning piece of this grant that they're going for would be is to figure out which one is what. 
what do we need to do to move this forward? I mean, I think we just need, you know, we support them going after the grant. Again, we have consensus. a consensus. Okay. Yeah. On them. I mean, really after that, we don't really have any anything. I just I mean, do you feel comfortable with supporting that? I support it. I don't know how we can do Okay. Tier. I can support the grant for getting more information. Yeah, and that's kind of it. Trustee Recky? I, I guess not knowing enough about it, if it's just a grant, I, I support it. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from ERCO with not meeting with ERCO or anybody like that, but it doesn't sound like it would take anything away from them, mm -hmm. uh, considering that they're one of our, they are our largest industry right. here and support right. the village in numerous ways. Um, but I would support uh, discussion of it. Trustee Zerflo? Oh. Do you support it, Joel? You're muted. muted. Uh, hello? You're muted. I thought that's what you wanted me to be. <laughs> um, I guess I would just have to have more study on the issue. Is right now it's a feel-good proposition, which tend to come back and bite you sometimes. Mm. Sure. Okay. Okay, I can just talk to uh, Mayor Zacher and just tell him what we, how we feel on it. Okay, thank you. Uh, is is the grant for the study? The grant is for the study to get the information. Right, it's okay. not for the rerouting. It's for the study. I guess does that make sense, Trustee Zerflu? Does that make a difference? The grant. Is for the, for the study to have them drop some plans and make it look nice. Yeah, no Maybe problem there. Okay. Yeah. Or... yeah, it's not for the rerouting, it's for the plan of it, for the research of it. Okay. It going anywhere. Right, it might not, it may just be like, this is your best option, <laughs> so. I believe the study is already done. Oh. And it's on the Wood County, not the Wood County, the Wisconsin Rapids website. There's a link to it, Trustee Zerflu. Um, it went in front of HERC from a county perspective, and a link to there is in the HERC packet for this month. Point of order, Madam President. Point of order. Yep. Keep the discussion on the table. I didn't hear any permission from you to go off table. I did. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll move forward on that. Um, any other new business? Sorry. No. Uh, report from village administrator. Uh, we have uh, looking for a motion for a certified, certified survey map in the town of Saratoga. Um, this is information letting us know that they're going to be doing some survey work for the joining district, town of Saratoga. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, motion by Raggy, second by Grunin. Any further discussion? We're just approving this certified map. Yeah, yeah we've done that a number of yeah. times okay. on just the building. The building. Yep. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Trustee Zerflu? Aye. <laughs> that one passes. Do you want to go to B then? Yeah. In your back, okay. you guys will see um, bid results for the Second Street, uh, Edwards Avenue to Alleyway Shopping Center, um, the three-year TIF project that we will be I've been working on for the last year or so. Um, bid opening was at Quest Engineering. Um, precision grading was low bid. I'm looking for a motion for you guys to approve for us to get um, bonds, um, contracts, and everything signed here before the TIF district. Expenditure period ends end of September here. I'll make that motion. Motion by Radke. Second. Nope. Oh, second by Zerflu. Any other discussion? Trustee Grundon. Ben, what was the bid by Quest and what was the bid by Precision? Um, but, well, Quest did the bid actually. actually they did the bid. Only for us. She should have a packet of uh, different bids. Thank you. Yep. Very good at bidding to uh, a lot of different contractors. Some in area and some out of the area. Where's precision? Um, 
Any other discussion, questions? Hearing none, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Trustee Zerflu? Aye. Aye. Okay, that one carries. Anything else, Mr. Martinson? Uh, no, I just want to, uh, the next uh, couple months here, Dwayne is definitely going to keep assisting me and getting me up to date with um, the things that he's working on. And I appreciate his assistance and um, wish him the best. Uh, he's also taking care of himself and family and the health issues. And um, Tiara is at her last meeting. I want to thank her. It might be. We don't. Okay. Apparently. Thank you for all your work over the years, and we put a lot of time in, and I appreciate it very much. So, and also uh, look forward to the future. Okay. Dwayne, do you have anything? I know Ben covered a lot of it. No, Ben and I worked on it this last week. Ben covered it all for us. He's doing a good job. Thank you. Okay. Report from Clerk Treasurer Diane. Nope, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. Number 12, trustee comments. Does anybody have anything? So how will we go about when I'll be, you know, when I'm off the board? Well, this, this is a, um, kind of a you decision. So, I mean, it, if you don't want to continue because you have your um, reasonings, that's completely up to you. I would just fill in in those um, spots then for the next month, much of which I already kind of do. Okay. Um, so that's up. To, I mean, that's really up to you. Okay. Um, then I do want to share some things. Okay. If you don't mind. Okay. Um, due to circumstances outside of village board and village business. Obviously, I have decided that it would be in the best interest of the village and myself to resign from my role as village board trustee. I take my commitment to the village seriously, and I don't want to continue serving if I can't dedicate the same time and energy that I've provided over the years. This is not necessarily permanent. I'm not closing the door completely. Uh, this next year, there's a lot going on. And after that, um, depending on my circumstances, um, I may consider running for election again. Although I'm proud of things that I've worked on and accomplished while I've been on the board, and there have been some significant challenges, this brings me to a challenge that I would like to leave with both the board and the residents. To the board, there are tough roads ahead, as we all know. If the village continues operating the way that we have, not adjusting to not having the mill here, um, we're gonna deplete our reserve funds and we won't have the TIF to rely on anymore, um, which the village has been heavily reliant to maintain infrastructure and various projects. With that funding nearing the end, it's critical that the board actively work on economic development, increase our tax base, and explore alternative funding sources to ensure long-term sustainability. I hope that pursuing this mission is a top priority. In my opinion, this is the most important thing that the board could and should be working on in order to sustain our village the way that we're used to it. I'll continue to stay in the loop on the goings on and support you and the staff in any way I can. Um, to the residents, I encourage you to get and stay involved. The village needs your input and support. Phone numbers and email are on the website for all the board members and staff to be contacted. Let people know what sounds good and, and what you support and bring forth concerns and requests and ask the questions that need to be asked and holding the board accountable, holding us all accountable. Um, there's no need to wait for a meeting to ask those questions or have concerns addressed because the entire board and village staff, everybody is readily accessible. There's no need for 
to sit and wait. I mean, mm -hmm. and when people are not in the meeting, it's much easier to get the information that may be helpful. Um, and the elephant in the room. In the past year and a half, a small group of former firefighters, a former fire chief and a former firefighter current board member have consistently spread a false narrative about the village board operations. I bring this up because their actions continue to disrupt and harm those who are trying to carry out their responsibilities to the board. As most of you know, I'm a person that is not comfortable with conflict or negative stuff. I thrive on supporting people and working together. So this has been a challenging and new experience for me to make statements that are uncomfortable for us to all work with and hear. Um, I've ignored a lot in this time, some of it quite egregious and attempts to intimidate elected officials continue. The facts that started these issues are as follows. The fire chief was asked about the fundraising money innocently in an open meeting and what the goals were to use the fundraising money. There was never an attempt to take the money or use it. It was simply an inquiry basically out of the fundraising goal. Given that it came out that that is a nonprofit public charity, there should be no secrets. The attempts to keep that a secret became alarming for many. As the fire department roster continued to decline, it also became an issue that we had few firefighters that were compliant with the state regulations regarding facial hair and the SCBA masks. Those that were not compliant could not go into a fire. As we watched that roster get smaller and smaller and had fewer and fewer turning out and the ones that turned out, some of them had facial hair and could not actually go into the fire and fight a fire. They had to stay out of the zone so to speak, for their safety. They could do other things. They could not go in and rescue people or actually fight the fire inside that zone. The village ordinance, so that was number two. Number three, the village ordinances outline no beer in village buildings. The board asked that the stocked beer cooler be removed. My understanding is that we were the last fire department in the county, and I'm not 100% sure on that. So if somebody finds that it's not accurate, call me to task because I have no problem in telling you if I have misinformed. Um, we were the last fire department in the county to update and set that standard. From council with legal and insurance providers there is a level of liability that was brought to the village by having beer in the fire department. Additionally, with such a small fire department, it created a risk to having them gathered drinking, which limits the turnout possibility. Number four, upon having some of these conversations, a few of the firefighters, including the former fire chief and a firefighter board member, became hostile and launched a campaign of harassment and of disinformation about board members that challenged the status quo. Sorry, this is almost done. This harassment included the former fire chief reaching out to my adult daughter in what she considered and the board agreed in a very inappropriate way. I have and can provide the documentation to anybody that may want it and with everything that I state. Next, a firefighter board member texting and directing them to stare me down and make me uncomfortable during the meeting when asked, what can we do? 
prepare for this meeting. And shortly after that, the former fire chief admitted to glaring at me and th throughout the meeting consistently. The former fire chief made a false allegation against me. Thankful, thankfully, the first responder that was involved did not corroborate the lies and the first responder statement that was very close to my statement while making it clear the lies of the former chief. Former firefighter has publicly belittled and lied about police and fire commissioners stating the following. These are not quotes, but they're recorded. Regarding Leo Thomas Gart, a firefighter said was never a firefighter in Clover. Ironically, Mr. Thomas Gard has a picture in his role as firefighter in Clover with said firefighter's dad. Regarding Gary Bloom, the commissioner, the same firefighter publicly shared in a graphic, presuma presumably humiliating detail, a health crisis that Mr. Bloom had where this firefighter was there to help him. The message being, he deserved the promotion and how dare Mr. Bloom not endorse him. These issues are just a tip of the iceberg of challenges, lies and harassment towards elected board and police and fire commission members from these former firefighters. Commissioner Scott Stewart was threatened to be sued over these same things. A few of these former firefighters continue to propagate a large false narrative on a Facebook group they created for that purpose. The board has mostly ignored the inappropriate behaviors. This has not worked. These former firefighters are not doing this to serve the village. They are disgruntled in serving themselves. This is not leadership. Thankfully, all of the scare tactics that they dishonestly put out to the village have not come to fruition. In fact, exactly the opposite. We have a solid fire department with experienced leadership. The thing that has been difficult for us as a board is how to address and not fuel this false narrative. And I think that the board needs to be more responsive and correcting the facts moving forward because there's been a lot of misinformation that's been damaging for a lot of people. And I don't think that any elected official, commissioner, anything deserve to be harassed for not doing these promotions or things like that. That's absolutely inappropriate. Um, the only other thing, there has never, has never been an attorney that has endorsed any of that bad behavior, quite the opposite. There has never been an investigation because President Mansell's husband didn't get a promotion. That's not the case. And the outcome of those investigations are open to public request. So I think it's important and I really encourage village residents to um, really look and ask the questions. Everything that is in our email is open to public records. All of it is. And it's simply 99% not true this continual stuff. And when people say they've done this and they've done that, it's important that we as board members say, what are you talking about? Let's fix this. And it's important for village members to do the same. Because if it were the way that has been presented, we all need to be booted off this board, but it's not. Everybody on this board knows the circumstances, and I think we need to do better at not allowing those, the nonsense to distract from the work that really needs to be done. I think we are very lucky to have our new fire chief. Um, I think he's going to do great. I am 
very thankful to have worked with all of you. And individually, the person I am, much to my dismay and embarrassment, I love people. And um, I, if they would have stopped, I'm the first person that would have said, let's move this forward in a positive way. Um, I very much enjoyed working with all of you. And I love you. I care about you. Um, as previous board member said shortly before he died, got to give it to you. And he argued with me all the time. <laughs> You've got tenacity. And I just appreciate everybody. And it's really been a great experience. And it's most likely I'll be back. I am very thankful, you know, the work that I've seen Lon do in the village and the experiences we've had in our home. Um, our part-timer that has, is leaving us, you know, he's a great guy. We're, we're losing out. I'm Ben, the way that he works with the village is wonderful. I mean, Johnny on the spot, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? Mm -hmm. When our family was going through a crisis in our village and my son was needed to be questioned and I called Chief who was out of town camping. And he said, I'm already on my way. That's the village that I have put myself in the crosshairs to say, I don't believe this is right. And we're better than all of that. I, I mean, we have great people. I mean, the Drews come to games hours away. Martinsons are Johnny on the spot for our kids and giving them things and support and encouragement. Our school is great. I just hope that you guys continue to fight this fight and keeping the integrity of our village in these most challenging times. And I will be sitting right over there next to Carrie Smith and uh, continuing to support the village when I can. And hopefully after the next year, I will, these circumstances will change and I will see if the village has, wants me back. And I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other trustee comments? Okay, so now it's my turn. Sorry guys, buckle up. Um, again, I wanna just thank trustee Grunin for her time on the board. She has served faithfully since 2017. She has had the tenacity. I did not know you were gonna say that. Um, so um, I believe that that's through and through exactly how uh, you should be described. She's had a tenacity to do what is right. She's had an agenda to do what she thought was best for the village, and that is the only agenda. She was an advocate for our police department and our fire department with her time on public safety. Wow, I can't spell apparently either. Uh, she has fought for higher wages for both of our fire department, both our fire departments and police departments as well. She would come prepared to meetings and ask questions for understanding and for appropriate decision making. She has been zealous. Some would say overzealous at times, but her heart has always been in the right place. To do what is right for the village has always been her mission. Trustee Grundon, I hope that you enjoy your time with your family and I wish you nothing but the best. And I debated going into this next piece. Um, Trustee Saylor was not here tonight to give his uh, statements that he wanted, but I will submit that to the record. Um, he had concerns on the um, committee structures that I was changing. Um, and I don't want to do this because it keeps perpetuating that idea of us versus them mentality. And I do not want to contribute to the chaos that has been and is still created by these certain individuals. I want village board meetings to be a space for working and moving the village forward. However, there's some, uh, some things I want to address that I'm being accused of um, in this correspondence, but I'll keep it brief. If anybody wants to talk to me afterwards, I'm more than happy to do so. Uh, there was an accusation that I do not seek the did not seek the other side of a um, complaint that was had. 
um, and that story has is false. I asked to meet with uh, this individual and address the complaint that is in question. There are emails to prove that this person did not want to um, did not want to meet with me. The accusation that I'm on a witch hunt or trying to drag anybody's name in the dirt is false. If I wanted to do that, I honestly would have done it by now. Um, however, there is a certain Facebook page that is doing this to discredit board members, members of the fire department and myself. There have been false statements, statements taken out of context and made up stories and conspiracy theories with no proof of what they say. Uh, my husband and I have received personal attacks via messages um, on our phones and it's just, it's all got to stop because that is not in the best interest of the village. Everyone around this table is a leader in this village we, and we have to act accordingly. We need to be able to foster a working relationship whether or not we agree with the person sitting across the table from us. And our employees as well as other board members and commission members deserve a non-toxic work environment. I have and will continue to foster a working environment for all. I will continue to clearly communicate with everybody. As a village trustee and now as a village board president, I've always been available for conversation. I make myself available not only here before and after meetings, at, at events in town, games, music in the park, trunk or treat, whatever, I'm always available. I'm aware that the sensitive environment that the past board president election created and that I've gone out of my way to create an environment a work environment that is to be inclusive to all board members and employees to be able to move forward. My efforts have been rebuffed by some, that, but that does not change the fact that I have worked very hard to find a, to create something positive for everybody on this board. And I've had positive and produ productive working relationships with most. Um, is We need to be able to hold each other accountable. I'm kind of going to inadvertently piggyback off of here now um we need to hold each other accountable and be um be accountable to our village residents and our village as a whole that's all i have anybody else okay so for committee meeting calendar obviously it's a little sporadic right now uh public works we will get back to uh, I will contact Trustee Saylor on when he wants to schedule that. Um, public safety, September 25th at 4.30, Parks and Rec to be determined. Um, FHRIT, October 3rd at 5 o'clock, PLP, September 25th at 5.30. Sound right? Okay. All right. With that, I will call the, without objection, I will call for adjournment at 831.